So I have before me two Intel i7 equipped laptops. However, we have some slight differences here and I wanna to prove to you why the latest Intel Arc GPUs are better than the combinations we've seen in the past from Nvidia. Now, right before me, we have the i7-12700H in the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 OLED and the Arc A370M GPU. Now over here, we have the Acer Swift X. This has the i7-1260P and the RTX 3050 Ti. Now we're gonna get into the full performance benchmarks in just a minute, but in case you're curious about the differences between these two laptops, let's jump into those things really quickly. Now, right off the bat, the Acer Swift X14 is a little bit lighter than the Asus ZenBook. Now they're about the same same thickness, um, but the build quality on the ZenBook is a better in my opinion. We'll do a quick tap test to show you what I mean. Here's the top cover. Sounds nice and firm, no rattliness on the top cover. A little bit of rattle on the bottom cover, but not a lot. Now here is the Swift X. Sounds a little hollow, a little bit rattly. And on the bottom cover, same thing. So I really prefer the build quality on the Asus ZenBook Pro 15 OLED. Now, taking a look at the ports on the left side panel, you can see we have an HDMI, USB type A, as well as a micro SD card reader on the ZenBook. And on this Swift X, we have two USB type C's, HDMI and a USB type A. Flipping it over to the other side, we have another USB type A and a headphone jack on the Swift X. And we have two USB type C's and a headphone jack on the ZenBook. So ports are pretty similar outside of the ZenBook having that extra micro SD card reader. Now, from a screen quality standpoint, the OLED screen is definitely better. Now they do make an Acer Swift 3 OLED, which is basically the Acer Swift X14, but without a dedicated GPU and instead has an i7-12700H. So if you're looking for this laptop here, the Acer Swift X, but with a better quality screen and non-GPU equipped, then maybe check out the Acer Swift 3. But between these two laptops, that OLED screen is much better on the ZenBook Pro. It's got better brightness, color gamut range, and color accuracy. Now looking at the interior of the laptops, you can see that we have a larger trackpad on the ZenBook compared to the smaller trackpad on the Swift X. So definitely a better creator laptop for on-the-go creators, whether it be designers, photographers, video editors, or artists. Now for the keyboard, I like both keyboards pretty much equally. We have similar spacing between the keys and about a medium key press. However, we do have this numpad on the right side panel and we have kind of these smaller arrow keys where we have two big outer arrow keys and the two smaller center ones. Now luckily both laptops have full size shift keys. So I really like both laptops for that reason. Now one thing to point out on the Asus laptop is you have a lot of good fan control. We have three settings here, performance, standard, and whisper. On the Acer laptop, we don't have any sort of fan control or, or thermal control on the laptop. So that leads me to lean towards the Asus laptop for just a better experience you know, you can make it quiet, you can make it run more high performance, you can put it on standard, there's just a lot more flexibility. Now, speaking of the flexibility, the Asus ZenBook will keep you on the go longer. It has an i7-12700H and the latest Arc A370M GPU, and we have better battery life than the i7-1260P, which is a lower TDP processor. Okay, so that is why I am telling you that now with Intel being GPU and CPU in the system, you're getting much better bang for buck. You should get better battery life out of an i7-1260P. The i7-12700H should not get better battery life, but because of the Intel GPU matched with a high performance CPU, they're able to share the task management and therefore giving you better efficiency. So something that is more efficient for the GPU to run, the system sends to the GPU. Something that's more efficient for the CPU to run, the system keeps it within the CPU. Where you have an i7-1260P, which is a very efficient processor, however, they don't communicate well. And that NVIDIA GPU burns up a lot of power. So it's not as an efficient of an overall system. So the question is, is the A370M the more powerful GPU between these two? Not necessarily, they're pretty much on the same level playing field. However, because Intel has both components in the system, it is far more efficient. And that is why I believe it's an overall better bang for buck. I would go for the Intel Intel equipped system over an Intel NVIDIA equipped system, even though that CPU is technically a lower power consuming CPU. Now, before we go on, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability between these two models, so you can help make the right purchasing decision for you, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. 
Now, before we move on, I forgot to give you a quick sample of the keyboards and trackpads in use. So here's that for you. And then of course, if you're curious what the speakers sound like, here's a quick audio sample of the speakers on each of the laptops. Now the upgrade path on both of these laptops is basically none. I mean, you can swap the SSD, but there's gonna be no RAM upgrade for either of these laptops. So keep in mind, whatever RAM you purchase each of the laptops with is where you will stay. So that is something very important to consider with your purchasing decision is how much RAM do you need. Without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks where we can get an even closer look at the performance differences between these two specific setups. Now, as you can see in Geekbench single core, the ZenBook and the Swift X, both with the differing processors, score almost the exact same score. Now, as we move on to multi-core, you can see we have a slight difference between each of these laptops. You can see that the i7-12700H is outperforming the i7-1260P by over 2,000 points. So if you're looking for a multi-core processor, then you definitely want to go with the i7-12700H inside of the Asus ZenBook Pro. Now, as we move on to Cinebench R23, you can see similar performance that we saw with single core performance in Geekbench. And then as we move on to Cinebench R23 multi-core, you can see pretty similar performance again, where we have the ZenBook scoring a 14,000 and the Swift X scoring just under 10,000. So again, multi-core performance is definitely better with the i7-12700H. Now moving on to the Photoshop benchmark, you see that the Acer Swift X scores an 817 versus the ZenBook Pro with a 968. So again, the combination of that i7-12700H and the ARC A370M is gonna be better. It's gonna be better performance and better battery life. Um, so I think it's a big benefit choosing this combination. Now, as we move on to After Effects, you can see we score a 683 out of the Swift X and a 702 out of the ZenBook. After Effects is not the best score for these four gig VRAM equipped cards. After Effects wants a little bit more VRAM for a lot of that motion design processing. Now, as we move on to Premiere Pro Playback, you can see that for 6K B-RAW, we're dropping about 6,880 frames out of the ZenBook and then 9,035 frames out of the Swift X. So though it isn't great in the ZenBook, it is definitely better than the Swift X. I really wouldn't recommend either of these laptops for 6K B-RAW. As you can see for 4K playback, we have zero drop frames for both laptops and for 1080p, zero drop frames as well. But these are not what I would consider 6K video editing laptops. Now, as we move on to the 4K export, since that is what I recommend using this laptop for, you can see we have a three minute and 18 second export out of the Swift X and a three minute and 29 second export out out of the Asus ZenBook. So punch for punch, I would still lean towards the ZenBook because you're gonna get better battery life out of the laptop. Now, as we move on to DaVinci Resolve, you can see we have a 12 minute and three second export compared to the 10 minute and 59 second export out of the Asus ZenBook. Again, these are not the best laptops optimized for DaVinci Resolve. I hope Intel does a little bit more work with DaVinci Resolve to optimize this a little bit because honestly, I feel like these laptops should be in the six to seven minute range, not above 10 minutes. Um, so we'll see where we go in the future, but right now, not my top recommended laptops. Something like the Asus Republic of Gamers Zephyrus M16 or the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro would be much better DaVinci Resolve laptops. Punch for punch, I'm definitely a fan of the latest Arc Intel GPUs. Not because they're anything earth shattering or that, you know, we're getting zero drop frames in 6K B-RAW, because that would be, to me, unrealistic. But what I love to see is better power management and efficiency out of Intel by combining the parts. This, to me, is a work in progress. And this is the first GPU I've been able to review. We still have the five and seven that I've yet to review that I can't wait to get my hands on once I have the opportunity. Again, links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase, likes of this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.